Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head up to Norway for the first time in what feels like a good little while. And for this review, we're going to return to a brewery that you've seen me review a good number of beers from before. And this particular beer is one that I really, really, really wanted to try after I saw it on social media. I was a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to get a hold of it, but luckily when I was over in Copenhagen recently, they had a few cans of it left at Shiosk. So um, yeah, I got really quite lucky with this one and it's supposed to be an absolute monster as well so hopefully this makes for a good review and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So for this review then we are going to go to Oslo, the capital city and we're having a look at yet another beer from Amundsen Brewery. This must be review number 10 or so that I've done from these guys, something like that but this particular beer is the Viking Brunch Fest. It comes in at 13.5% ABV and this one is an imperial stout brewed with coffee, cocoa nibs, Madagascan bourbon vanilla and maple syrup so um, yeah it's somewhat of a cross between a coffee and a pastry stout and uh, yeah this one I think should be really really very nice they're describing this one as a breakfast mud cake ultra pastry stout so yeah at 13.5% ABV it is a bit of a monster so uh, yeah I'm very very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Always nice to return it to Amundsen. Um, their pastry stouts have a very, very good reputation and I think this is only the second or third pastry stout that I'm having from these guys. The beers that I always used to review from Amundsen before were the um, the kind of New England, the sort of hazy IPAs and things like that. I'd love to try a West Coast IPA from these guys and see how they do it. They apparently released a lager quite recently as well that was supposed to be really good. So I'll need to see, I'll need to keep an eye on what's coming out from Amundsen uh, through Shiosk in Copenhagen and just see what I can get. But yeah, very, very excited to try this one. This is a beer that I was very, very keen to get a hold of and thankfully I did. So let's go for it, guys. As always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Amundsen Brewery before and you will definitely see more from these guys in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlists for beers from different countries there is one there for all the Norwegian beers that I've reviewed for you that is being added to fairly regularly not as regularly as I would like I would love to have a Norwegian beer meal that I can send money and they send me beers that would be awesome but nobody's volunteered for that job yet but yeah if you are interested let me know through Instagram but yeah do check out those uh, the playlist of all the different beers and do let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Amundsen Brewery then on to my brewery notes so as I've told you already Amundsen Brewery are based in Oslo the capital of Norway in the southern part of the country and the brewery is part of the Akerhus group which owns a number of bars and restaurants around Oslo so the main men in this company are Ole Johan Tollefsen, Bore Jensen and Tom Erik Andreasen. So the first brewery that they had was part of a gastropub in Stortingsgatan, right next to the townhouse in Oslo, right close to the water actually. I do recommend you go and check it out. But this was just a very, very small operation and the key man in getting this established was Tom Alfred Oimo and he'd been a home brewer for a number of years and he still um, organises everything in that little brew pub from what I understand. But the brewery expanded and by 2015 they were producing around 200,000 litres of beer per year and they'd become quite established within Norway having opened up a larger production facility in Nydalen, still in the city. But later on they continued to grow over the next few years but in 2016, the parent company purchased up the property company Halketo Eindam, and with this, they acquired the Björnur de Vein uh, Fjurton property, the Björnur de Vein uh, 14 property, to translate that into English, and this was in the Halketo area to the south of Oslo. So this was turned into a 3,500 square metre brewery, and they began brewing their beers there in late 2016, and the new brewery capacity started off at around 1 million litres of beer per year. I believe they have expanded it a little bit since then. But the brewery equipment that they have there came from Braucon in Germany and the canning and bottling lines were brought in from Italy. Apparently the total investment in this site was 16 million Norwegian kroner. So pretty heavy. That's about 1.5 million British pounds if I remember rightly. It's somewhere 
in that kind of region, but at least 1.5 million euros went into the, uh, to, you know, to was invested in this brewery. And you know, it might be a little bit more expensive because it is Norway, but still, regardless, even if you invest over a million euros in a brewery, you are going for it. Um, but the managing director of this brewery is Jeffrey Janssen van Vuren, and then Matthew Thomas and John Hansen are the two others that are involved in the day-to-day -day running of the brewery. So the artwork on the cans is designed by the American uh, John Peter de Villiers. And uh, in 2019, these guys produced around 9,500 hectolitres of beer per year. I believe that's about 950,000 litres, if I'm remembering my, uh, ca my conversions correctly. I should do, because I was a maths teacher. And as of August 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 95-ish different beers, according to Untapped. The exact number that was on there as of... Uh, today when I'm filming this one was 97 so um, yeah pretty cool I have to say um, these guys are one of the better known craft breweries in Norway you know you've got the likes of Servicium um, you have Lervig you've got Amundsen there's other breweries kind of coming up um, all the time in Norway now I've had some really uh, interesting beers from was it Lindholms Lindholms brewery if I remember rightly they were the sour beer brewery based on the farm there's Equitid now as well um, you know there's various very nice breweries in uh, up in Norway as well Hamdbrigeriet were an old favourite of mine too but it was Nugnau who were the ones that really kind of kicked that off but of course they are now owned by one of the big breweries Hansa Bori so um, yeah, um, these guys, as I say, probably one of the most uh, probably one of the most findable, if you like, Norwegian breweries that you're going to get you're going to get your hands on. Amundsen and Lervig are probably the two that you're most likely to come across, followed by Hand Brigeriet. But yeah, if you haven't tried some of the Norwegian beers, I highly recommend that you do. Uh, you know, they're very, 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 very capable brewers up in Norway. The beer scene up there is very good. It is just you know very expensive. The one thing you will have to deal with when it comes to Norwegian beer, though, just because of the the strength of the currency, uh, the labour market and you know just the strength of the Norwegian economy in general, Norwegian beer does tend to be a little bit on the pricey side of things, although in fairness for us in Sweden and uh, you know in Denmark as well I guess it isn't too bad, probably if you're in Switzerland or the Netherlands I would think these beers aren't too bad uh, price wise either, but in the UK I know they are a little bit pricey com compared to the kind of local ones that you can get, but um, yeah very very nice beers in my experience, I've had some really really good um, IPAs from these guys. Space Tiger is one that uh, that I always remember. Um, even more Cowbell was a really interesting one. The most the most dry hopped beer that was ever produced in Scandinavia, from what I remember. That was a collaboration they did with Lervig. And uh, yeah, I've not had too many of the pastry stouts, um, but they are definitely worth having a go at if you get the chance. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Amundsen Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that they've done but uh, yeah this is a brewery that I would love to feature on a meet the brewery segment so maybe the next time I go up to Norway I'll drop them an email and see what I can do Lervig would be the other one that I'd really love to get on the channel at some point as well that would be awesome to go uh, to go there and uh, to Stavanger and see because you know Lervig are probably the best these two as I say are the best known Norwegian breweries but um, yeah that's uh, all we can really say about Amundsen make sure you check out some of their beers uh, and you know the, the you can't really go wrong with the pastry stouts or a really nice uh, New England hazy IP and do check out the um, the Amundsen uh, Brewery was Spicery next to the old townhouse in, uh, in Oslo. I went there for lunch with uh, Michiko when we were up there and it was very, very nice. I do wish that I'd filmed an out and about video there though. But um, yeah, let's have a look at this one then and see how we go on. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. This is a can that I will definitely be keeping a hold of. I love uh, the kind of Viking artwork that this one has. There you can see, I'm not sure if it is meant to be, uh, I don't think it is meant to be Thor, I think it is just meant to be a Viking with the raven on his shoulder. But uh, yeah, really, really nice. There you can see the griffin, the Amundsen griffin on the label there, which is uh, which is pretty cool as well. The Amundsen symbol is very, very nice. But it says on the side here, breakfast mud cake, ultra pastry stout, 13.5% ABV. They describe this one as being a, an imperial pastry stout brewed with coffee, cocoa nibs, Madagascan bourbon vanilla, and maple syrup. So I think this one should be very, very nice. So um, yeah, really curious to see 
what this has in store for us. So yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. I can't remember how much I paid for this beer. It was maybe around 60 or 70 Danish kroner, which is maybe about nine pounds sterling. So probably about 10, maybe 10, 10 euros, 10 euros 50, something like that. But yeah, probably, yeah, probably about 12 dollars, 12 US dollars for those of you watching in the States. But yeah, you know, when it comes to something like this, this was a beer, as I say, that I read about and just really wanted to try. Look how thick that thing is as well. That is just mental. Look at that. I think we've got about two thirds of it in the glass just now. This is a 440 milliliter can, of course. And as I said to you earlier, I bought this beer at Shiosk in Copenhagen, which is one of my favourite uh, beer shops. I've actually got another Imperial Stout from a brewery in America that's kind of Viking themed as well. So um, yeah, we'll need to see about that one. We'll need to review that one for you in a few videos time. But yeah, as you can see and as you would expect from this beer, it's poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. If I shine the light through this one, it has a tiny little bit of a slightly Coca-Cola coloured edge just around the top ring of the, uh, the glass there. But yeah, this beer is pretty much as black as night. Um, you can see that when we poured the beer, it poured with you know a tiny little kind of frothy layer of a very dark tan head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass on this one. It maybe just one or two little specks of dust on the glass. But you can see there are a few small bubbles just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But as you'll always get with high alcohol beers, the head has faded very, very quickly and it's just a very, very thin ring around the edge of the glass there. But I mean, overall, it does look very, very nice, this one I have to say. I like what this beer has going for it. So uh, yeah, nothing surprising about this one in terms of its appearance when you consider that it is a big imperial pastry stout. But yeah, I think this one is going to be an absolute monster. So let's have a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on. Yeah, it smells lovely this one. So for me, um, as I've told you on the channel before, I'm a huge, huge fan of coffee stouts these days and a lot of that I credit to Dugis Briggery in, uh, in Gothenburg with the key and the Sidamo Dim Tu. You know, those beers, I never liked coffee, I never liked coffee at all, but then I think, I forget which one I tried first actually, I think it might have been the Sidamo Dim Tu that I tried first. And uh, that changed it for me. You know, I really, um, I never drink, I still don't drink coffee, but I love coffee beans as an adjunct in beer. I love it. Um, they can give you such a level of complexity to the beer. And as I've told you before, when it comes to coffee beans, it's all about the mazel, the meters above sea level at which the bean is grown. Apparently, the higher the altitude that you grow the coffee at, the more likely you are to get kind of, you know, floral and fruity flavors out of it. So coffee from different countries has, you know, you know, vastly different characteristics. Um, you get they can be earthy, they can be floral, they can be fruity. Um, same as you know, same as hops, really, to be honest. Um, but yeah, this one, the coffee that comes out of this, is really, really nice and very smooth. I get a little bit just on the coffee bean. It comes across as very, uh, it's got a lovely kind of smooth roast to it, but I find it quite aromatic in a way as well. Um, the earthiness, there is a little bit of a, just an earthiness to it. The roast is very smooth, I think, a little bit floral, and there is a wee bit of an almost kind of dark, fruity and woody and leathery note to the, um, the coffee in there as well. Yeah, a bit of a red fruity character coming off the coffee there. I could say a bit of a, you know... I don't know if it's quite raisins, maybe more like pruny or something like that. And that's just the coffee bean we're talking about. It's not anything else going on in this beer. But yeah, you can smell the coffee beans just kind of forming the backbone of this beer. Um, you know, breakfast stouts are always like that. You know, Kentucky breakfast stout from Founders and the Canadian breakfast stout as well. Um, although the Canadian one I think is more sweet. I don't know if the Canadian one has coffee in it, if I remember rightly. But um, yeah, the aroma out of this beer is just lovely. The coffee gives you a beautiful smoothness to it. The beer does have an element of woodiness, kind of uh, kind of forming the backbone of the beer as well. Um, it's got a bit of, it's almost a little bit kind of oaky, but it doesn't come across as infused in the same way that you would get with uh, a barrel aged beer. I can imagine this one would be ridiculous if you barrel aged it. But then again, I think with some, I've always questioned whether barrel aging with certain beers is really necessary. And there's something about this beer that I would say, right, is it really necessary to barrel age this? Because I think it might be, you might, you would lose a bit of the mouthfeel out of this. And I do like the coffee stouts to be a bit thicker, to be honest. Um, but yeah, the, 
the flavours, the aromas you get out of this are absolutely beautiful. You can smell the maple syrup in this one, and it's actually quite a bright maple syrup, I think. Um, you do get a bit of the kind of treacly molasses brown sugars in there as well. There's a lovely bit of chocolate to the beer. It actually smells like it's around a kind of 40 percentage cocoa chocolate, actually. Um, you really kind of get that out of, um, out of this beer. But um, it's... Yeah, the chocolate in this one comes across as almost a little bit milky, kind of somewhere in the middle, 40 or 50% cocoa. That could well be due to the kind of bourbon vanilla that's in this one. Um, you do pick, you can pick up a wee bit of that kind of bourbony note to it, but I think it's quite minimal. The beer for me, there is a, an element of a bourbony, leathery sort of thing to the beer. Um, kind of towards the front of the nose, uh, at the top if you like. But yeah. As I say, it's the coffee beans that form the backbone of this one. The chocolate kind of sits on top of that, the 50% is chocolate and the vanilla. And there are a few wee bourbony notes. And you do, the more you smell of this beer, you do start to get a few more kind of brown sugary notes out of it. Like, um, you know, you, you get a few more kind of brown sugary notes out of it. A little bit of a kind of um, sweeter caramel in there. You get the, the brighter maple syrup, like I said, which it comes across as a little bit more kind of wafery, like a biscuity wafery sort of thing. That's what I always get from maple syrup. But yeah, there is a wee bit, there's a wee tiny touch of a treacle molassesy note to this one, those kind of more caramelised brown sugars, but quite a bright caramel and the even brighter maple syrup coming out on top of that one. But yeah, the beer, in a lot of ways, I think the coffee is the thing that's really holding it together, but also adding a real kind of depth of complexity to the beer. Um, yeah, the aroma of this one. It's really nice. The more and more that I smell of this, the more my nose really kind of just gravitates towards the uh, the coffee side of the beer. On the hoppy side of things, you do get a little bit of earthiness out of this one. Uh, you do get a little bit of earthiness out of this one. You get some nice um, kind of floral aromaticity out of the beer. Um, you do get a little bit of a lighter kind of grassy thing to it as well. The hoppy, the sort of green side of the hops, if you like, are not too present in this one. But when it's a big, malty beast of a beer like this, especially a pastry stout, you... Um, you would, you would come to expect that, to be honest with you. The aroma gives you the impression of being very, very smooth, and this one has both wheat, uh, wheat and oats in it, so it is going to be a very, very smooth beer, generally speaking. But on the fruity side of things, there's quite a few interesting things going on with this one. There's a good little bit of a kind of dark plummy note to this one. Um, it's definitely got a kind of... I don't, know if I, want to, I don't know if I want to say cherries. There might be a little bit of a kind of dark cherry to this one. Um, it's not really tart in the fair way, but yeah, you do get a lot of those darker kind of juicy plums and cherries and a little bit of an almost figgy kind of pruny note to this one. There's quite a, a combination of, um, you know, more oily, darker red fruits coming out of this one, which is nice. But you do get a little bit of that kind of figgy uh, and pruny kind of note in there as well, like I said. And you do get the kind of black currant uh, and blackberryish notes that you would expect. Of, uh, of this kind of beer style as well. You can smell that right at the front of the nose. So the fruitiness does have a good level of complexity to this one as well. You can get everything that you would expect out of this beer. Um, you know, as I say, it's, what is it? It's the Madagascan bourbon vanilla. There's the coffee in there. Um, there was the maple syrup. What was the other thing? There was cocoa nibs, I think, in this too. But yeah, this is a beautiful smelling beer, this one. Um, I'm really excited to try this, so let's just uh, let's just get on with it then. So this one is the Viking Brunch Fest Club, an imperial stout at 13.5% ABV. Um, there is, some places are describing it as a pastry stout. I'm sure we'll figure out when we taste it. It might turn out to be more of a coffee stout, but uh, yeah, this one is brewed with uh, with coffee. It didn't say what kind of coffee actually, um, but it has yeah. So it's got coffee, cocoa nibs, um, maple syrup, and uh, Madagascan bourbon vanilla in this one. So let's get stuck into it from Amundsen Brewery in Oslo in Norway. Let's get stuck in Slange Skull. Oh, Jesus, man. That is just beautiful. That's a lovely, lovely beer. Um, you know, when I had a little, I had a little quick look at Untapped on the score of this one earlier, and I think it was like 4.25 or something, and that's a very impressive rating on, uh, on Untapped. But this is one of these ones. Um, I always say take rate beer and Untapped and things with a pinch of salt. 
Um, but this one, uh, I, do, I would wonder, you know, if it's only 4.25, should this beer be rated a bit higher than that? I would say so, but this is beautiful. This is lovely. If you get the chance to try this one, I highly recommend that you do. I mean, this brewery have a reputation when it comes to this style, and I've not tried too many of them, to be honest, because we don't get so many of them um, over here in, uh, in Sweden, in fairness. And I'm, I'm not over in Copenhagen, like, every week or something, so I just tend to pick one up when I go over there. But... Um, yeah, you know, this one, I think, is, uh, is, is, is one of the best beers I've had from Amundsen, quite easily, yeah. But yeah, this gets a massive, massive thumbs up from me. Amundsen have done an awesome, awesome job with this. This is definitely a sipper beer, and it's very sweet as well. It's actually very easy to sit and sip this and just enjoy it. It's one of these ones where the whole flavour just kind of fits together. It's very, very smooth. Um, I think it probably is fair to call this one a pastry stout rather than a coffee stout, to be honest with you, because the coffee really comes out um, on the aftertaste. The coffee is more of an aftertaste element to this beer than anything else, but it really adds a lovely kind of depth to the beer at the same time. So yeah, let's. the question is, where do we start with describing the flavour of this one? That's the big thing. But it's a big, oily, creamy, sweet beast of a stout, actually. I really, really like this. Let's say thumbs up. So, yeah, let's just um, let's just go for it. I mean, when you take the beer in, you get that lovely, big, oily, liquidy feel out of it. It's very, very sweet. You know, as I say, a little touch creamy, but big and oily at the same time. So, um, underneath the, the whole thing, you do get a little bit of the black malt. You can pick out just a little bit of that smooth black malt in there. But, um, you know, on top of that, you get the coffee beans there. And the coffee bean, like I say, if you go towards the back of the palate, it's got a lovely, very, very smooth roast to it. And it does dry out a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste there. But as you move further forward into the middle of the palate, the roasty characters do get a little bit more, um, you know, they do get a little bit more, um, how do you say, um, they do get a little bit more almost woody and slightly earthy, if you like. You do get more of the earthy roast, I think, kind of in the, the middle of the palate there. And the most, the big complexity to this beer, of course, is in the centre of the palate there. Um, and I like that about it. I do like that about this one. So, yeah, I think that the coffee, there is a wee bit of the black malt sitting there and the kind of coffee malts just, um, you know, the coffee and malts just sort of... Um, Say the, yeah, the coffee beans rather, not the coffee malts. The coffee malts just really, they, they dry out just quite nicely and they linger there into the aftertaste. In terms of the flavour, yeah, it's a very smooth roast coffee. It's a, it has a little bit of aromaticity to it and you're going to notice that in the middle of the palate. You don't get so much of the fruitiness that I was picking out in the aroma though. Um, so yeah, quite a, a little bit aromatic, but a little bit kind of um, nice smooth roast, like I said, and a wee bit woody at the same time. So I really like how this, um, I do like how this goes together. I must have had this just a little touch too cold, but um, who knows, it still tastes beautiful actually. Yeah, because the glass is sweating a little bit. But yeah, this beer is top class, absolutely. But yeah, um, towards the back of the palate then, you can feel a little bit of the kind of um, you do get a little bit of the kind of wheatiness. You can detect a bit of that slightly wheaty, very slightly kind of bready note sitting on top of the kind of of the kind of coffee malts there, the roasty coffee notes there on the on the back third of your tongue. Um, um, you do get some of the brown sugar. There is a wee bit of the maple syrup, I think, creeping back there as well. But yeah, as you move further into the middle of the palate, as I say, you feel, if you go to the, the front corners of your palate and then just move diagonally back, you'll get the kind of woody elements out of the beer. Um, and it's almost, you can feel a little bit, it's almost like quite woody and bourbony in a way. That's when you get the bourbon vanilla. If you move to the front half of that middle third of your palate, that's when the kind of vanilla notes uh, come out. It's all very infused together, actually. But yeah, the woody notes, front corners of your palate diagonally back. Kind of smooth coffee notes uh, kind of sitting on top of that, as I say. But then in the very centre of your palate, you do get, uh, you can feel the chocolate. There's almost like a little island there, and then you get those lovely kind of smooth bits of the cocoa. Now, so the chocolate actually feels a little bit dry in this one, and a bit more toasty than you get the impression of in the aroma. It really smells like more of a milk chocolate 
in the aroma, but it does come across as a slightly darker chocolate, maybe a 60%-ish cocoa chocolate, and that sits there in the very centre of your palate. On top of that, though, um, you can feel the brown sugary notes. The maple syrup sits there. You get a lovely big kind of thick, sweet, caramelly note out of this one in the very middle of your palate as well, which is really quite nice. And you can feel there is a bit of the kind of oaty smoothness coming out. The further you go into the aftertaste, you, you can detect a little bit of the oatiness in this beer. And that's where the vanilla, if you go to the centre of your palate and just move further forward, you'll feel the vanilla kind of in there on top of those woody um, and kind of oaty smooth flavours in there. The way that this goes together, it's, it's very layered. This beer is very, very layered, but the coffee for me is, is the backbone of this beer. So um, yeah, I like how this how this whole thing goes together. It really is very nice. And as I say, on those woody notes that you get at the front of the pot, you do just get a wee tiny, tiny little bit of that kind of bourbon character out of the beer. It kind of sits there. It sort of blends in with the maple syrup. I've always found as a Scot and having you know tried various Scotch whiskies because that's just what you do. Um, you know, I've always found the American bourbons just to be a little bit sweeter and more brown sugary. It's the American, most beer styles and stuff that go to America tend to be a bit sweeter than, than everywhere else. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the um, you do get those bourbony elements kind of on the front, almost corners of the tongue there. You can really feel more of that woodiness. So almost this beer, it almost develops just a slight leatheriness, I think. On the front, if you, as I say, you go to the front corners of your palate diagonally back a little bit, you get that woody note, you get the bourbony quality, some of the vanilla in there, and you do get just a little bit of a leathery uh, bourbon whiskey type note coming out of this one. Um, uh, yeah, I like, I really like how the flavour develops in this one. This beer does dry out a little bit more uh, and become a little bit more almost like musky, if that's a good way to describe it. It does become a little bit more musky the further you go into the aftertaste, but the the flavour of this one is, um, is absolutely beautiful. Um, I think, you know, if I think about it, I don't know if this, this, this may be, um, it strikes me as one of these beers that it, it's very layered and it has a good degree of complexity to it, um, but it's got just the right amount. Some beers you find they try too hard to be very, very complex. Um, and you know, um, I've had, you know, probably the most complex stout that I can think of I had was from um, Dead End Brew Machine, who are an Irish owned brewery in Glasgow. And he, the guy in there, he put like 12 different malts into this thing or something. And it, that's one of the best stouts I ever, I've ever reviewed, actually. This one really is very close to that, actually. Um, this is, this, I have to say, I think this one, for me, this is one of my favourite stouts, at least. Best is, you know, best is subjective. Best is definitely subjective. But favourite is as well. But, you know, this whole channel is my opinion in a way. Um, this is one of my favourite stouts, I think, that I've reviewed, actually. I would go that far with this one. I really, really like this one. So I would put this up there with the Nightland from Dead End Brew Machine. Amar Herr Fredriksen, and um, you know the the other one's gone right out of my head now that I had in mind. This always happens. This is why I don't do kind of top ten lists because I always forget something and I get annoyed at myself later. But yeah, this beer is really pretty good. The Black Hole, you know, Black Hole from Mikeler, Amundsen Herr Fredriksen, the Nightland um, is also and it, you know has been a very good one. I've had some really really good stouts over the years, and this this one's definitely in there. And you know the top five or ten stouts that I've reviewed on the channel. This is one of my favourite ones that I've had. So yeah, if you do get the chance to try this, I recommend it definitely. But yeah, that's beautifully done. I have to say, let's get the last of this in the glass. Just as I say, look how thick that thing is. We've covered the malty side of this beer, the middle of the palate, quite extensively. So let's just look at the hoppy um, side of things. I'm just going to look at this. Um, yeah, this one, yeah, I wonder what hops it says. Um, I wonder what hops they would have put in this. Maybe it's, you know, a bit of Magnum or something, or a bit of, maybe a little touch of Will You May, or Bramley's Cross. Um, Northern Brew or something like that. I'm really not sure. Eureka could be the other one that's in here. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, in the back corners of the palate, you do have a little bit of earthiness there. As you move along the sides of the palate, the earthiness just smoothens out a little bit. Almost becomes a wee tiny touch herbal. Um, but as you reach the front corners of the palate, it's got a little touch of floral character to it. Then round the very front curve of the tongue, it is a little bit lighter and grassy. Um, does it say a canned on date on this one? Because the thing is, obviously, at 13.5%, you could age this beer for quite a long time but it says is that best before best before the 12th 
of um, May 2021. You probably could age this longer than that in fairness, but I don't know. That's the one thing I'm not sure about is how well cans hold up against oxidation. I think that's why a number of uh, breweries still bottle their Imperial Stouts and then wax tip them to, to seal them up. But um, yeah, this one, as I say, it's. I think this. you probably would find the hops would drop out of it a little bit more as you're going, but I still get a good wee bit of grassiness out of this beer. There is still a wee touch of hoppy character to it, but the front third of your tongue is where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters push their way out of the beer, and this one has a bit of complexity to that as well. So yeah, when you take this beer in, it's got that lovely kind of plummy, raisiny, juicy character to it and you get that towards the back of the palate but then as you come further forward from that um, it doesn't, in fairness, I don't know if it really has the raisiny sharpness but definitely the kind of juiciness but yeah um, plummy um, notes there at the back but as you move further forward from that it gets a bit more dainty, a little bit more pruney you can get some of the lighter figgy qualities there as well but as you reach the very kind of front tip of the tongue that's when you get the kind of black currenty blackberry esters coming off this one and um, there is a wee bit, maybe a wee touch of cherry in there, but it starts off very, very juicy, um, and kind of oily in its fruity character there, on the uh, on the front part of the tongue. But um, it really is nice how the fruity side of this beer um, goes together. Actually, I like, um, I really like how this, um, how all of this goes together. I mean, big thumbs up to uh, to Amundsen for this. The fruity notes for me, the level of oiliness that they have is great, the level of sweetness they have is really nice and the brightness of them as well is really good. I'd be curious to know what hop it is that, that goes in here um, because the uh, you know it's it's a common thing. I've, I've never figured out you know is it Magnum, is it, uh, is it Eureka, is it Williamette, is it Northern Brewer, Bramlin's Cross and um, these are the hops you know Northern Brewer is popular in the Doppel Box, Bramlin's Cross and the English Barley Wines, the other hops are popular in the American Stouts and, uh, and and barley wines as well. I've never figured out exactly what hop it is, but there's something kind of um, a bit nostalgic about the fruity notes you get out of this. But regardless, I mean, I've tried to describe this one. I almost feel in a way that I haven't done this beer justice, but like I say, this is one of my favourite stouts, I think, that I've reviewed uh, here on the channel. I'm just glad because, you know, it was one that I read about and I was like, right, okay, um, this sounds as if it's going to be good and I was hoping it would live up to, to what I wanted and it has so I'm, I'm really pleased with that. Sometimes you get beers that are a little bit of um, of a kind of letdown in things but this one certainly isn't. I like this. It's almost in a way like when I discover, when you discover some of these big omnipoil cakey stouts for the first time. It's kind of like that. It's like a slightly more modern take on those, if you like. It's kind of because obviously these styles are constantly evolving. But yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful beer. It's a big sweet one though. It's a big sweet imperial style, and I've always loved those. It's the Scottish sweet tooth really coming out. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, this one then uh, full-bodied beer, no question about that. The mouthfeel is definitely very, very smooth on this one. It's got a big oily mouthfeel to it. Uh, it's a little bit creamy in certain ways. It's, it does have a bit of a creaminess to it. This beer for sure, um, but I would say more oily than anything else. In terms of uh, hoppy bitterness and stuff, oh, I think you're probably only talking like 20 IBUs or something with this. This is a very low bitterness beer, this one. Um, it could maybe creep up to about 30 uh, with some of the dark malts and the coffee and things like that, but I think this is a very low uh, bitterness, you know, 20 or 30 IBUs at the maximum. Uh, but the malt base, as I say, very, very smooth. It does dry out a little bit later on, but there's a hell of a lot of sweetness to this one. The sweetness there is a degree of oiliness to the malt base as well, which I think really suits it. But you've got some lovely fruitiness in there, slightly oily, but also very, very bright in terms of the, the fruity character as well. But for me, I think this one uh, has been one of my favourite stouts that I've ever reviewed on the channel. Definitely there in the top, uh, the top five or ten Imperial stouts that I've reviewed. Um, so yeah, have a go with this one for yourself and just see what you think. I think this one has turned out very, very nicely actually. So um, yeah, beautiful stuff this one. Let's leave it at that for this review. Lovely, just just everything about this beer I want to give the thumbs up to. So yeah, this one was the Viking Brunch Fest Club. 13.5% uh, Imperial Pastry Stout with coffee, cocoa nibs, Madagascan bourbon vanilla and maple syrup. From
from Amundsen Brewery in Oslo in Norway. Another beautiful uh, imperial stout from these guys and this is a brewery that you definitely want to check out if you're interested in Norwegian beer. This review's probably been a little bit longer so we'll cut it there but thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Amundsen Brewery as well. We will return to these guys at some point soon and uh, yeah if you do get the chance to try this beer I highly recommend you do. It will be a terrible shame if this is only a one-off brew but this is definitely a can that I will be holding on to for my background when I move apartments but yeah thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon check out my social media check out Amundsen Brewery and if you can do have a go at the Viking Brunch Fest Club beautiful beautiful beer this one Slanja Skull cheers